So my question is this, why do we assume that kids socializing and play is not a site of learning? And on the flip side, why do we assume that schools can't have a spirit of entertainment and play as part of what they're doing? Last year I wrapped up a three-year study with a large team of researchers where we were looking at a lot of different examples of kids' new media practice ranging from uh, sort of everyday hanging out behavior on sites like MySpace and Facebook with text messaging IM to what we were calling more geeked out kinds of participation like making YouTube videos, remixing videos, creating podcasts, engaging in fan fiction uh, and other forms of fan production. I think our most important top-level finding was that there was tremendous diversity in what kids were doing online and what kids were learning online. So most kids were engaged with what we were calling friendship-driven participation, which was primarily about hanging out with their friends online. Uh, and this is stuff that's not so different from what older generations did or what kids are doing today in the lunchroom and hallways at school. And this is a really important site of learning the sort of important social behaviors and what it means to grow up in a digital world and the sort of uh, ways in which kids post, link forward, comment, uh, create top friends lists. These are all negotiations that are incredibly important to kids growing up today. Uh, there was a smaller minority of kids who started uh, using this baseline technical and media literacy as a jumping off point to start uh, developing more sophisticated kinds of skills and this is what we called messing around or as a transition to more geeking out kinds of uh, forms of participation and that's where we saw a much smaller cut of kids it was really a minority those kids that uh, tend to be identified with more uh, creative or geeky or intellectual pursuits at school kids who have strong uh, interest driven orientations and these are the kids who are using the online world, using new media production tools, games, as environments to really develop specialized interests and very sophisticated forms of technical and media literacy. So I think there's this question about how we look at the relationship between the friendship-driven side, so the hanging out space, the messing around, and the geeking out. And I think it's actually important to value all those activities, but the way uh, we as parents and as educators approach these different kinds of participation is very different, I think. So overall, we found that kids aren't really welcoming of adult intervention in the friendship-driven space. I mean, I got so many questions from parents who were wondering whether they should friend their uh, teenage daughter or son on Facebook, for example, or were worried about the peer interactions. And adults have a particular and complicated role to kids' peer relations, and it's actually profoundly creepy for grown-ups to be participating in a space where there's a lot of sort of dating and flirting going around. So. For the most part, adults are not welcome in that space, but there is a role for education in the sense that kids need to start thinking critically about things like privacy and identity and all those things. And I think the adult world is quite aware of those concerns and issues, and we've rehashed those quite a lot. I think the piece that we don't currently have a real awareness that is shared or broad-based about is how we support kids' engagement in the more messing around and geeking out space. And this is the space that really has the opportunity to foster kids' intellectual development, their civic engagement, uh, their personal development in really important ways. And yet we haven't really worked as educators or parents to proactively engage kids. There really is a gap in perception and understanding between generations about the value of engagement with online activities. And so in the adult world, there was a, a general perception that when kids are in front of the screen or messing around with their computer, that it's a waste of time, uh, that it's taking away from more productive activities, healthier activities, whereas kids ascribe much more value to the, those activities. And that's, in a way, not so different from, you know, an earlier generation trying to get your teenage daughter off the phone or trying to get uh, your son to come in uh, from playing with their friends to focus on their homework. But I think there's a more general perception in the culture around new media that is associated with entertainment media and other forms of just 
mediated activity that it is inherently um, a space that is hostile to learning. And that's the perception that I think we really need to work against. And part of it is understanding the differences between different kinds of online activities. So friendship-driven activity is very different from interest-driven activity. And if you lump them all together, you're actually missing the opportunity for learning that's in the space and also not recognizing the sort of baseline social learning that's happening in the friendship space. We know that the learning outside of school matters tremendously for the learning in school. So a lot of what we're trying to say about kids in formal learning with new media is part of an already existing set of understandings that educators have of the importance of the home environment, for the peer environment, for the community, for learning that happens in schools. The question is, how can we be more active about linking those two together? And I think this is a tremendous challenge that a lot of these experimental efforts are dealing with. I think for teachers uh, and schools and classroom learning, there's still an incredibly important role to play, which is about giving kids access uh, across the board to a baseline set of standards, literacies, expectations about what they need to participate uh, in contemporary society, to be reflective, um, and to also take opportunity of the fact that you really have kids and adults in a shared space that's safe, that's sanctioned, uh, that gives kids an opportunity to reflect on things in their everyday life that's not just about them being immersed in it all the time. So I think that there are incredibly important functions for schools. What we're saying by valuing informal learning is not that we should abandon formal learning, but that we should get those working together in a much more coordinated way.